Photoshop Senior Edition, folks. We are going to look at what I call the Ansel Adams effect. Uh, this image I got offline. I, you have the link to this. But we're going to turn this in uh, to, or use the Ansel Adams effect on this to turn it into this. I mentioned before, and I mention it again now, that I think that black and whites are more uh, artistic images and we're going to use some artistic thoughts and processes to come up with the final image uh, using these techniques. Uh, this is just a regular color photograph that I got off of pixel, pixels.com and uh, ran a few things on it to get this intense color or black and white I should say now there's a lot of people that would say this is too dark and all that stuff you gotta remember Ansel Adams was very uh, adamant about getting the full range of, of uh, blacks and whites and all the grays in between you'll notice there are black places in this image there are very light places in this image, and we have grays running the gambit all through this image. So I think that this uh, compares somewhat with, with Ansel Adams' images. And let me just take you to a few of those so you can think about it for yourselves. Okay, you can see as I turn this page on, uh, the high contrast that's in a lot of these a deep... Uh, blacks that are in these we have the grays and we have the whites as well as we go through here uh, you can just see how the man manipulated light i mean a lot of his works uh, here's a lot of gray uh, but you still have the blacks and the shadows and so forth but just, just look at some of the intense blacks that these images have Let's just uh, go down here. Look at the intensity of the, the clouds up here, even the blacks that are even up in the sky. He was big on using uh, intense blacks, even in the clouds sometimes. So you can see how deep the blacks run in these. Just uh, some beautiful, I don't think that's where we want to go with that. It's too small of an image. You can see how rich these images are. I mean, just, you have the tonal range here. You got, even in the veins, you can see the outline of the veins in the, in the flower itself and the rose. Look just how deep, dark uh, some of this is very rich rich images even the people portraits a lot of uh, dark colors the striking landscapes now this one you can't certainly can't uh, say that there's a lot of black in the skies here there's not a lot of blacks at all except in the shadows uh, along in here and over here but still uh, he just was a master in the dark room with with using all of the controls available dodging and burning and filtering uh, you know you can build contrast with even red filters when you've got uh, uh, film in inside of a camera and you can do the same thing in the darkroom using red filtration but uh, look, look at how rich this is there's not even any detail in this rock here and here and here so this just keep this in mind as we work on some of the images uh, that I have for you in this demonstration. So hopefully now this doesn't seem uh, quite so intensely black. There are a lot of blacks. Like I say, we have a lot of tonal range here. And this is what we started with. This is an image... Uh, that I took in the uh, Garden of the Gods. And you can see it's uh, got a nice range of color in it. Nothing particularly uh, dramatic in the image, but I think as a black and white, 
it becomes a much more powerful image. And let's see what we got here is also one. Now this also comes from pixels.com. We've used images from them before. And we just have these few things here that turned it in to a much stronger uh, artistic looking image, more like uh, Ansel Adams Yosemite type works. And we're gonna start with this one of uh, the crossroad uh, where the Dillinger, uh, this, this thing's photographed by everybody, I think that comes uh, to SIU. But uh, this Dillinger crossing is uh, kind of famous for all the photographers, I guess, that visit it. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, this plays off what we had last week using the gradient map plus some things so we're going to start right off make sure that black is on top in the color picker and you can have your uh, eyedropper on it really doesn't make any difference what tool you have on we're going to go over here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the yin yang looking thing here and go to gradient map Immediately, it turns into a black and white image if you have black on white. So what I'm going to do, the first thing is, uh, this makes a really good looking uh, black and white image, but it doesn't have an Ansel Adams effect to it. So I'm going to click on the gradient editor, and I just want to point out real quick, these are the default uh, gradients that uh, come already loaded when you get Photoshop. Uh, if, if that's not what you're seeing now, you can click right here on the gear and go down to Reset Gradients and then just click OK and the default ones will appear in there. We're using this first one right here. Um, sorry, third one. And because this is reversed, we want this here. We could use this one and click Reverse right here but I think it's simpler just to turn that off and use this one, black to white. All right, so I'm going to click right on the editor itself to bring this up. And the on, about the only change that I make right here in this one, and again, you should be more familiar with what how the gradient map works. We're going to just click right here close to richen this up with more blacks, okay? And if we want to tone that down a little bit, we can double click on that crayon to bring up the color picker and we can move up the scale towards light and just sample another color which brings more uh, light back in. So we can click OK. Now if we want to stretch this out, it gets a little bit darker. So we can kind of control how far, how fast that happens. Click OK. Now the other thing we want to do is make the clouds, uh, affect the clouds somewhat. So I'm going to get this thing out of the way. There's a couple of things that we can do. Uh, I like to go up here to use saturation and click on it and sample where the clouds are already getting a little bit more dark. Click on the little hand with the finger extended and then go over and sample that cloud. Immediately it'll show you what uh, group of colors is affected by that. So we click here and it shows those are. So we're gonna take the lightness down and <clears throat> I've already made a mistake, so let me fix that before I go any further. This should be on the image. So I'm gonna just toss this away so it's not confusing. Uh, after we did the gradient, we should have clicked on the image, or I should have, and then do the uh, use saturation. So I'll click the hand again, come up here and sample that, and then take the colors up and down, see what happens. See how it's changing right up there. If you don't get a sufficient change there, let's take this down. There we go. We've got a pretty good looking uh, dark area coming in right there. 
if you don't see that, there's still another way to go. And we might be aided with that even in this circumstance. But you can see the effect that that's having on those clouds. There's a lot more definition now. Uh, and we have a better balance through the image with that. Okay. We can also go up to the levels adjustment. And we can bring the uh, either the middle gray slider down or we can bring the left uh, marker down to the right and really pop those blacks. Now I know it's changing blacks everywhere in the image, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, don't know if we need it because we've got a successful hue uh, saturation change there. But let's just go with something like that. Now what we're going to do is fill this levels mask with black because we don't want the whole image affected by that. So I'm just going to go to edit down to fill with black. So if just click OK, <clears throat> that takes the effect off of everything. So now if we want to show, we turn on a paintbrush and we paint with white. Knocks a hole in this. And we need a big brush. And notice up here, I'm going to change my opacity. Uh, take it down to around 50% or so. And I'm going to change my flow uh, down to around 50% as well. And I'm just going to paint up in here. And you can see <clears throat> the darker colors coming in. So just paint where you want this effect to be. And we turn that off and on and you can see how dramatically that changed it. So this is what I call the Ansel Adams effect. We're really pumping the blacks and the whites, but we still have the grays throughout. You can see grays all through here. Uh, that was very important to Ansel Adams, uh, certainly, to have that balance in the image. Okay, let's go back over to this image, and I'm going to turn uh, this stuff off. Actually, I'm going to put it in a, a group. Let's just revert this one. Let's just go, re nope, can't revert it. So let's go to history. We'll go to the original snapshot, which is black. Okay, so let me pause just a sec. And I've got pixels going, so I can just uh, go into pixels, and here's the image and it loads it right back up. So I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff that's in here, just hitting uh, backspace or delete. And I'm going to go down here and delete this. Right click and delete smart filter. So we're back. When when we bring these in uh, from pixel, pixels.com or pixels.com, it comes in as a smart object or a smart layer. Uh, we can quickly change that by doing control A, control C, control V, and it copies and pastes it to a new layer without being a smart object. It doesn't make any difference. We can work with it as a smart object. It's, it's fine. But just wanted to reiterate that, show it to you again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do once again is to run the gradient map. Now I caution you, if you, uh, this, this is downloaded from the internet, and it's got some soft pixelated areas. So this may be one of those, and it's probably good that I have this one so you can see it. We're going to take this over into um, the camera raw filter and sharpen it up and get rid of some of that junk. So I'm going to click on the uh, pyramids the smartening, the sharpening uh, icons, and zoom back in because I, well, let's zoom back out, I'm sorry, uh, because I want to protect some of this. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and get the mask to just select these trees and uh, the water here. I don't really want all this stuff up there sharpened so much. Okay, so let's zoom in. I'm just clicking here, there, 
to get to a nice pixelated place. And I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. And maybe bring the radius up just a little bit. And let's move around here so we can see some that's sharpened. Then I'm going to go down to luminance, which softens things a little bit. I remember this is kind of playing against the sharpening we just did. But I'm getting rid of some of that by bringing back luminance detail some. So that should be okay. I'm going to do a control zero again. And let's just see here. I don't think we can really tell much at that stage of the game. Not really seeing the, the difference in the sharpening there. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to do the gradient map. And there we've got our black and white. And again, I want this to be, sorry about that. I want this to be um, more contrasty. So I'm going to click right on the gradient and put another little black crayon in there and see how much that bumped it up. And now I'm going to close this. We don't need to even consider this bottom layer. We'll just turn it off so it doesn't confuse anybody. We're going to try the U saturation again and see if, uh, and again I need to put it in the right place. Let me just get rid of that. I need to select the actual image and then click the U saturation. Then we'll click the hand. I'm going to click up here in the clouds where it's a little bit darker that selected uh, information at both ends. So let's just try taking this down first and see what it does. Run up the saturation. Now look how broken up that is. So that's because of the pixelization. We didn't really smooth it out very good. So instead of doing this, we'll just get rid of that and we'll hit backspace on that layer to get rid of it. We'll just go up here and click on the uh, levels adjustment and we'll bring the levels way down like that we can also take down the middle slider a little bit I don't think it needs it we'll go right in there but that's not bad okay we're gonna change this blend mode to overlay or soft light sorry and notice up here we've got all kinds of dark uh, up in here so we're going to and we've got a lot of dark down here so we're gonna fill this again with black over here so edit fill with black and that takes the effect off everything again with a brush and adjust it accordingly remember your uh, you can just right click and change the size right here or use your left and right right bracket keys to resize that. So we want to punch a hole in this black. The black is killing uh, the effect of this levels adjustment. So if I punch a hole through it with white, which is now the foreground color, then I can start painting that black in wherever I want. And I might want to just bump this to 100 leave the flow down and then I can bring that back a little faster let's make that smaller so we don't let's see if we're yeah we're see we're darkening it up pretty good it's adding a lot of more contrast just even from those little places there need to make our brush a little smaller let's just go ahead and go 100% so we don't have to fiddle around And if you paint over, just turn around and paint back with black again, and you'll have it fixed. Okay, so let's turn that off. Now, if we want more of that, we can just do a Control J, and that bumps it up. Now, this has gone to pretty much jet black. 
and we've got a you know sh drop shadow basically showing there so we can drop the opacity of the top one so now those two are having a pretty good amount of effect on there uh, also we might want to punch out uh, some of that back here on these mountains I think it really lends a lot to it if we do that back in here a little bit it's not going to bring them back in super dark but if we go to the next one we can also bring it up a little bit more so let's see what we've got here I'm going to do a control alt shift E, you have to be on the top layer when you do that. And I'm going to turn off all of these deals here. And notice everything that I had right here combined into one, including the color layer, combined right into this single uh, layer here. Control, Alt, Shift, E. E is an echo. Uh, now if I turn this off, you'll see the original. And you know now why those mountains don't get deep dark dark uh, because they're very pale also so we've actually uh, burnt them in so to speak a little bit more does that make any sense to you I hope it does uh, we can also turn on the um, the dodge and burn tool and right here that saturation so we can dodge or we can burn so we can actually burn a little bit more uh, of the mountains in just don't go too far because we're working on top of this layer now we could just create a gray layer there a gray uh, middle gray layer and dodge on it so we could undo it if we wanted to and let me show you how to do that let's get rid of this and we'll go back here where we were and we'll do the control alt shift E again combining all layers into one I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to fill this layer with middle gray so go to edit fill 50 percent gray click OK now we really can't see anything in the image but here's what we're gonna do we're going to change the blend mode of this layer with the gray on it to overlay and then with the uh, burn tool we're going to just burn right on this layer and that'll make it darker and the more we do it the further it darkens down just don't go too far now you you don't have to worry too much about it if you do go too far uh, because it's just on this gray layer okay so you you know easily can make a new gray layer or just fill it with middle gray and start over so we can go up here to edit fill 50 percent gray that's back to the way it was before and we start burning again so you don't have to worry with this layer included here you don't have to worry about going too far if that's a good layer that you're like this layer uh, that you're burning on or dar dodging on uh, then you're gonna have trouble getting getting it to undo go in there and burn that a little bit so hopefully that made some sense now there's one other thing that you can try if the sky isn't as dark as what you'd like it we can create a new layer blank layer we have a gradient tool right here and just make it 
click on it and go from uh, foreground to background and what we want is the uh, background to be black cancel that and what we'll do is just click and drag holding it down like that so it makes it darker obviously but not in a way we, we really like it and then go up and change this to soft light and you can see how much more that took that down so again, we probably aided in the uh, Ansel Adams effect right there. Several steps involved with this one, but I think if you go over it a few times, this will make even more sense. So now we're going to finish up uh, with this one, and this may be my very favorite one to work on. Uh, this one, we're just going to leave it as a smart layer. It really doesn't hurt anything to be that way. And I'll turn that on again so you can see. Um, if you think that's over the top, we can always drop, you know, the opacity of the layers that are in here. But let's just uh, turn that eyeball off and let's begin from the beginning. Let's do a gradient map. And it immediately turns it into a black and white image. And it looks pretty good. A lot of gray, though. A lot of gray. Down here we got some blacks. And that's good. Uh, we're going to click right on the gradient editor again. And we're going to create that extra little uh, crayon in there to bring the blacks down a little bit further. All right. So let's take a look and see what we accomplished there. For some reason, when I exited a while ago, I did away with my other crayon. So let's get that back in here. Now remember, the further I go with this, the darker everything is going to be. Although there's a lot to like getting very dark, you don't want to go crazy with that, right? So let's click OK. And we'll turn that off. And again, now we'll take a look and see how far we've come. Okay, okay, let's get back on the image again. So make sure the image is selected this time. And we're going to go up to the use saturation. And we're going to click on the hand. And let's go out here and let's just click on that. And so we can kind of see, and if I drag that back and forth, you see we can make it darker just by dragging it up here. But the trick is, you don't want it to start getting banding and all that. So let's drop the saturation or the light a little bit. And you can experiment with what the colors do. You see how it's moving around. Uh, I think something like that looks pretty good. If we turn the eyeball off on here, you can see what difference that we've made. Not ginormous by any stretch of the imagination, but we've got some more texture to work with. So let's just close that and click on the top layer and click on the new layer icon as we're going to add a gradient here. And this time I'm going to put the gradient uh, more in this corner than I am up here. So what I'm going to do, click on the gradient again, and we're going to drag it like so and just let go. So let's change the blend mode on this again to soft light. Take a look and, and you can see what it's doing. If you don't like the fact that this is making this darker right here, then all you have to do is paint uh, on a mask. But what we're going to do first is bring a little bit more of that black in up here too. So it's like we're filling and, and filling again uh, with that black, okay? So here's, here's what we've got now. If we want to mask that, we just click on that layer, click on the mask, and we can paint with a brush with black. And let's uh, go at this with a big brush. We're going to 
dampen that down right there. And let's drop the opacity here. We want to go, or let's drop the flow down to about 50%. And now we can just paint some of that back up again, make that bigger still yet. So now you can see over here what we've got. So we're not affecting this down here very much now. All right, so we've got that much darker up there now, but what if we put a levels adjustment on top of everything and bring this middle slider down a bit, or let's bring the blacks down. We're only going to be affecting this up here. So let's just click up here, go down here, and click on soft light again, and look how dark that's become now. Now it's affecting the whole image, so again, we're going to turn this black. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go up to Edit. Well, we got to have that turned on. We're going to go up to Edit and Fill with black this time. So it negates all of that black that we just created. And now we're going to punch a hole with white. So we can press X to make white come up. And again, let's just take the opacity down a little bit. And we'll punch a hole and we'll start making this up here darker. So now let's turn that eyeball off and on. Look at that. Nice rich blacks up there. Nice rich blacks down here. Lots of gray all across the rocks. And we've got nice uh, sky up in here. Some of it's very dark and impending. Um, so you can control uh, the light throughout. So right down here, let's see, let's go, yeah, right in here, we can bring back uh, anything that we feel is too dark. Okay, so let's just... Uh, Go ahead and, and do our little trick again to put air, all of this on its own layer. And that's, again, Control, Alt, Shift, E, Command, Option, Shift, E on a Mac. That created this. So let's turn everything off except for this layer. So let's bring levels out or layers out here. And let's turn this one off. Let me move that over here a little bit. So we'll turn this off to see the, the original layer or the original image. And that's what we brought it to. Again, if we want to punch a, some of that up a little bit, bring in more white, we can do that because of all the masks we've got. Now remember, if you... Uh, Monkey around, let's say we want to, let's turn this off, and we'll turn all these back on. If we want to, um, we don't want that on. If we want to bring back, let's see how this affected it. I didn't make this near as dark this time as I had before. Um, we can certainly make this over here around the rocks even darker sorry about that uh, if we want to and then only bring out some but the way I did it this time uh, I think we got good tone range all the way through this area we got beautiful whites in the waterfall we got grays in the sky and, and dark areas and rich blacks running through here I, I think it makes a great image but you're the one you're the artist you get to control how much of the blacks and whites go where remember what Ansel Adams did was the the art in the black in the black room, yeah, the dark room, uh, just a whole new ball game inside of a dark room, and we can do so many things in there when when we've got film in a black and white lab. Okay, now we've got Photoshop, so we can do the same kind of things using these adjustments, layers, the gradients. Hopefully, uh, you will work with this and try it. Again, I think a lot of people uh, focus on beautiful, saturated colors anymore, which is fantastic. But I think there's a lot to be said for an image like this. Let's just 
make this full screen uh, so it can be a little better appreciated. I think something like that is hard to beat. Uh, I'm, this is my little screen capture thing that's on right there, so I apologize for that showing. Uh, but I think uh, you see that there's merit to this process. Okay, that's it for now. All I can do is say goodbye, and you know how to get a hold of me if you need me. All right, bye-bye, y'all.